All right, perhaps the most important teaching out of everything tonight is going to be this one. So out of everything you're going to hear tonight is probably going to be the most interesting and the most important. Okay, so one of the worst branches, in my opinion, in my opinion, probably the worst academic field that is anti-scriptural is actually psychology. Psychology. Now you might say, why is that? Because psychology, you'd be amazed that a lot of it is pseudoscience, just like evolution. A lot of it is pseudoscience, like evolution. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that, you know, if you have a family member who's suffering mental issues and mental defects, that you have them throw away the pill and then uh, ignore therapy or treatment, and then they break down and then they cause and wreak havoc in your household. I'm not saying that. Psychology, you got to realize this, is that obviously, like evolution and like the devil, they will take an element of truth, okay? So you can't just totally reject science. You can't totally reject psychology. And neither can you reject also entirely Satan's statement. You might say, why is that? Because there's an element of truth in there, but that's how he deceives people, is that that element of truth is enough where it cloaks the lies, yeah. see? What Christians need to do is filter down and see through that and expose it. So that's the problem with Eve. Eve fell into that sin. Why did she fall into that sin? Because Satan, he lied to her, but he, get, he didn't entirely lie. He said what? You're going to know good and evil. That's what he said, and they did. Okay, uh, so concerning about psychology right here, it's very interesting that as your pastor took some master's courses on that one, that I see how this can easily replace our spiritual walk with God that he intended. Now, your sanity, listen up now, your sanity and your success, your mental and health well-being depends entirely on your relationship with Jesus Christ, and that is the most important thing out of everything in your entire life. you got to realize your relationship with Jesus Christ is even more important than doctrine. And you know how much I stress on right doctrine, right? You might say, really, how dare you say that? No, there are people who have all the doctrinal corrections and their spiritual walk is weak. And let's see how that right doctrine benefits them at the judgment seat of Christ when they haven't read their Bible and prayed at all. Bunch of Bible believers causing stupid little fights on social chat networks, picking fights, criticizing everybody, trying to find imperfections with all preachers who are trying to preach and teach and help people grow, and then critique about this and that and that. Why? Because they're an 18-year-old punk who knows it all. Yeah, See that? They, people think that I'm divisive. No, I, I'm against division. I disdain that. The reason why I attack false preachers out there is why? Because their false doctrine is what breaks up the unity as well. That's right. See, people don't, uh, people don't consider all sides. But anyway, the spiritual walk is so important for a person's mind and uh, mental health and well-being right here. So in your mind right here, what's very interesting, if you study body, soul, and spirit, and perhaps some of you have uh, studied that from me at Basic Discipleship, right? Um, body, soul, and spirit. The soul aspect is concerning the real you, right? The soul is referring to the real you. The soul is in desperate need of something spiritual. Psychology, I don't know if you knew this, but I explained it in other videos, it, ology is study of, right? right? You know what psyche is? It's referring to the soul. It's referring to the soul. But scientists would prefer more of this word, mind. The reason why is because they don't believe in anything spiritual in there. Yeah. If they refer to the soul, they're going to uh, interchange that with mind. They're going to mostly think mind. And that's actually true, though. That's actually true. It's because, but they're not thinking on a spiritual level. We believe this is tangible and real right here, see? That it can be measured right here. We believe in that. Not measured in physical, empirical, scientific aspects relating to the physical realm. We believe that it can be measured in the spiritual realm, see? But concerning that, that's why this study can be dangerous. You might say, why? Because they're the one that's, uh, that the soul is seeking refreshment after. When the soul goes through conflict, pain, and turmoil in life, 
God is there, the center of your life. And that's the, the most life-changing experience ever in your life. Listen up now. The most life-changing experience ever in your life is actually when you go through that deep turmoil and trouble and God became the center of your life that pulled you through. And that changes permanently your mind, thinking, character, personality, and your entire future. Psychologists recognize that. They realize that those painful things changes lives permanently. So what they resort to is that they ignore God out of the picture and they refer to this what? Fantastical subjective experience of the client. See? So basically it's all on experience, experience, experience in your mind. See that? That's why it's more subjective. They like the subjective approach more. But the simple answer to this is, did they not read Jeremiah? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? What did Paul say? I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. You really trust yourself that much? No, I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself. And that's a psychologist's job. So this is the element of truth. See, I've already showed you the lies. Here's the element of truth that is very interesting. Psychology realizes that in the person's mind, so I'll use blue because I already used enough blue for psychology here. In the person's mind, there's already a turmoil of all kinds of thoughts going on. So psychologists, what they try to do is that they try to filter it all out. So how they filter it all out, which you people probably did not realize this before, but did you ever voice recorded yourself before? And then when you voice recorded yourself, you realized a little more, I didn't think that I said it that way before, or I believed it that way. If you don't believe me, you should try that out. Try where you're actually complaining about everything in your life and voice record yourself and pay attention to you. Even better yet, video record yourself. That's even better. And you'll see from your behavior, your manner, your facial expression and everything that you're like, wow. And sometimes you might tell yourself, get a grip. What are you doing? <laughs> or not only that, you're also going to realize, I can't believe that I actually said that. Did I actually say it, say it that way? That's what psychologists do. So what they do is that they do restatements and paraphrases, parroting back what you say. Why? Because when you're complaining about your life and they parrot back what you say, the client will say from his subjective experience, uh, that's not what I meant. Yeah. And then when the client says, that's not what I meant, here's the kicker. The psychologist then tries to say, okay, then what did you really mean? Yeah. Then the client is saying more, but he's wording more carefully. Mm -hmm. And then while the client's wording it more carefully, the client, when he keeps hearing the parroting back from the psychologist, the client opens his m mind, his or her mind, and realizes, wow, I had a lot of weird stuff going on in my mind that I didn't really believe in that I didn't really mean. I was just going by how my flesh felt. See how this affects, the flesh affects the soul right here and the mind? So then by doing that, then they find what? The core issues. And that's the psychologist's job is to discover that deeper core inner problem that the client is unaware about. You can complain about busyness at work or family doing this to you. But as you keep talking about those, uh, about those experiences, they filter what you say and find a deeper meaning, a core issue there. That's what they do. And then by doing that, what happens is, is that they have a therapist who helps them and guides them to discover that process. And by guiding and discovering that process, the client becomes more aware of his core inner issue. And not only that, what they also can do is talk about solutions. You might say, that don't make sense. No, you'd be surprised that when you talk about your solutions, not just thinking. See, thinking, you're not taking time to ponder and analyze and really listen and pay attention. That's why you got to say it. When you're talking about solutions, the therapist will say, okay, so what are some solutions that you can think of concerning this core issue? Well, I could do this and this and this. And then the psych 
therapist will say, okay, so we can focus on that. And then the client will say, but even though I have the solution, but this can happen, that can happen. So then what happens? They retreat back to the statements here and they filter it out to find another core issue and then to find a different solution. See how effective that is? But here's the thing is that, do you see how this replaced God's role of the Holy Spirit here? That's Satan's success. The Holy Spirit is your guide. And when you're praying to the Lord, you thought that, Pastor, this is not a subject on prayer. It's more on psychology. Ah, this is one subject of prayer that a lot of people don't talk about. So this is what I want you to see. In prayer, there's your statement. You know what? Uh, read verses in the Bible where uh, people who had a deep prayer life with God, they'll usually talk out loud or they'll become emotional or um, they'll describe more of their problem in better specifics to the Father. Exactly like you show your emotions in therapy, talk more specifics of your issue, et cetera, et cetera. Now, <laughs> there you go. So the thing is this right here is that when the Holy Spirit is your guide, he filters out what you say. And this is not a subjective experience. You have something to rely on. It's objective. It's an objective experience. Why is it an objective experience? Because you have your standard, the Word of God. Now, see what happens then. When you put your standard on the Word of God, it filters. It filters what you're saying here. And then as it's filtering your statements here, now I want you to look at your own experience, okay? Look at your own experience in life and see if what I say is not true in your life. Weren't there moments of crisis in your life? But then it was filtered out when you heard the Word of God somewhere, which is why Word of God is important. So you need to read the Word. You need to memorize the Word. You need to hear, go to church and hear preaching. And wait, Pastor, you're just telling me the basics that God said a long time ago. Exactly. It's not that complicated. We think it's some, this is some kind of complicated voodoo, yeah. and we need some psychologist guru to, there's a deeper issue. No, it's simple, more simple than you think. Well, why didn't God explain it this complicated matter? You know why? It's not necessary. Yeah. He's like, take it simply as it says. Can't you just obey what I said? Yeah. See, we think that there's got to be a deeper answer, a more complicated answer. No, just take it simply as it says, and you'll do fine. Amen, brother. You don't need to know every detail, but that's human problem. Yeah. Our nature is we want to know. In the middle of problems, I want to know why God. That's the problem. See? So what you need to do is that when you're praying, and when I'm saying praying, I mean real prayer, right? And it better be more real than your therapy. If you're more real and genuine and honest and more working in therapy session on yourself than prayer, that's something problematic. You got to realize this, a lot of clients in therapy sessions, they're working on their souls better than you Christians are. You know why? Because they got that therapist encouraging, guiding them to open up them, to work on themselves. But when you're in a trial and a problem, you feel like this is too much work for you. And because of that, you don't like to work on yourself. When you're talking about the problem, you don't want to talk about the problem. You want to repress it. That's the psychological issue that therapists realize, repressing problems. No, let's explore them. And you got a father who's better than any therapist. Yeah, and he says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. And not only that, you know what therapists do when they try to guide through the process? They don't really know what's going on in the client's mind. Every therapist realizes that. That's why they do restatements and paraphrases so that they can find out what the client is really saying. But can I tell you something? The Word of God already read your mind. 
And then if you were to speak out and be real and genuine, like a client doing to a therapist, if you would actually get on yourself, work yourself saying, okay, God, this is my problem. No, don't just say to pro your problem in two sentences. Tell him specifically, God, this is my issue because of this, 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 and this. And then the Holy Spirit is working on your conscience because you do have a conscience and the Holy Spirit in you and saying, why is that a problem? Oh, come on. Don't deny it. You know that I'm right sometimes. Yeah, amen, when you hear the preaching, when you read the Bible, and especially when you pray, you do know God. It's not, it's not a verbal auditory thing, but it's the Holy Spirit inwardly speaking in you through your conscience. And then he's saying, why is that a problem? Well, because I'm afraid of pain and hardship and stuff like that. Why are you afraid of pain and hardship? Because my word says that you don't have to be afraid of pain and hardship because I'm in control. Well, God, it's not an, an, enough concerning that. See, that's what God wants. He wants you to be honest. Not just saying, oh, yeah, I know, God, your, your word says that. Yeah. No, be honest. Say, God, I know your word says that, but this is what my flesh is feeling. And when you explore that more, then the word of God becomes even more alive to you. That's what happens. So that's another uh, lesson concerning real. Do you have real prayer? Real prayer is the same thing that you notice in psychology. It's the working on the self. The self is who? Again, that's what psychologists mean by soul. They're talking about yourself, the real you, your mind. But we know it's uh, more than that. The real you is actually tangible, measurable spiritually, and it will live with Jesus Christ up in heaven. Amen. See? Isn't this amazing where the, then the Lord, the Holy Spirit, talks to you a little bit more through the preaching, through reading the Bible, through certain verses you memorized, and the Holy Spirit speaking to you and showing you things in your life, in your encounters, and then when he does that a little more and a little more and a little more, you get more to the core of the matter. Now, I don't, I'm pretty sure I have witnesses here because I believe it's impossible. When you went through a trial and situation, if you overcame that, if God gave you grace to go through it, didn't you found there was a bigger core issue about yourself that you didn't realize before? Yes, yes you know I'm right about that. You might say, how do I know that? Uh, why do you say that? Because it's not my subjective experience. It's an objective experience based on the Word of God. And so many Christians who have the inward testimony, inward witness of the Holy Ghost who said the same thing. You discover a core issue. That's why it makes so much sense why the Bible keeps saying that the trial is made for our what? Betterment. That's what psychologists realize. A better self, a more mature self, is when it goes through crisis and problems. This is amazing, right? But how have people easily replaced the Word of God and put it on the shelf, which you can get less than a dollar at a, a, a King James Bible, less than a dollar at a Dollar Tree store, and you spend hundreds of dollars on these kind of quacks over here? But it did help my life. Yeah, they did. You know why? Because they took the, the inner workings of the Bible and the spiritual walk. Satan just mimicked them. He just mimicked them and put it in his system. Yeah. He will give you anything that will help you as long as it replaces the Word of God. Right. Now remember that. Just because it gave you a positive experience and helped your life doesn't mean a hill of beans. Right. 